This is Upwell, a new podcast from Only One, featuring entrepreneurs, advocates, and leaders working to protect and restore the ocean and the planet. And I'm your host, Aaron Kinnery. Today we have Matthew Reitz, the director and producer of Deep Rising, a new documentary that is premiering this year at Sundance, exploring the fate of the deep ocean as a small cohort of regulators and companies open it up to exploration for rare metals. Matthew's previous project, Anodi's Ark, looked at the fate of the Republic of Kiribati as rising sea levels threatened to engulf the island nation. Let's dive in. Matthew, thanks for joining Upwell, and congratulations on the release of your new film, Deep Rising. The film starts with remarks from President Kennedy commenting on the vast minerals harbored by the ocean, showing just a brief glimpse of the long history of humankind looking to the ocean for resources. When did your interest in the ocean as a subject first start? It started um, almost 10 years ago, actually, as I started to work in, in Kiribati, um, in the Republic of Kiribati in the middle of the Pacific. And it was another climate story, basically, um, of the Pacific island going underwater due to the rising seas. And so that's really where I focused my, my work for five years during that time. And in 2018, the film Anatis Arc actually premiered at Sundance too. And um, in 18, I met, so I was I was in touch with a chief scientist of, of Kiribati, Dr. Gregory Stone, and he started talking about deep sea bed nodules. And at that time, it was the deep sea bed mining was basically, n- no one was talking about basically nothing in the media, nothing in the press, was very kind of uh, obscure uh, topic. And I said, oh, I basically started digging into it and I realized I just opened a Pandora box of the energy crisis and how, you know, we we power our so-called uh, green rev- revolution by extracting mineral and nickel, that is um, cobalt and nickel, that are really hard to find, and and also you know all all the, the fact that seventy percent, almost seventy percent of the planet's surface is being managed by um, unknown obscure organization UN. UN, UN organization based in, in Kingston, Jamaica. So during that time, I was like, oh, I think I'm on something, basically. So I started really digging for five years into, into the story. And your film Deep Rising dives into the race for deep sea exploration for nodules at the bottom of the ocean floor. Just for folks who might not be as familiar, what is a nodule? So nodules is, is um, basically it's made by uh, a few metals. Most of it is manganese, but it's pretty uh, pretty fair amount of um, cobalt nickel and some other rare earth minerals um it takes millions of years if not hundreds of millions of years to just um by layers by layers those metals are um are are getting uh, so we start with like usually um, uh, organic matter so it can be a a shark teeth or any form of organic matter and slowly slowly Layer layer by layer, concretion just form those um, potato size um, polymetallic nodules. What's driving the increased demand for these nodules? Oh, electrification, for sure. Moving away from fossil fuel um, and and storing energy. So you know, I'm all for 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 a green revolution. So it's it's I think <clears throat> going solar, going wind, going renewable is absolutely necessity. The problem is we need to store energy. So the, the the way it's currently built is doing massive amount of of storage batteries basically built on 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 those uh, rare to find minerals, um, and I understand we need some some powerful uh, batteries for electric car for instance. But uh, in my view, for instance, building a, a gigafactory, a typical Tesla gigafactory, which is basically you know, tons and tons and tons of nickel and cobalt piled up to, to store energy make no sense because we have the technology right now to, to, to produce and store and green energy without using those metals. It could be in different uh, chemistry in the batteries that are based on aluminum or iron or phosphate. Um, and obviously, uh, a green hydrogen is a very, very interesting way to store new form of, of green fuel. Um, so my view is as... We're moving away from from uh, oil and gas. Um, the basically, you know, the biggest the biggest industrial power behind it, which are enormous. They don't want to lose uh, control. They don't want to lose their lobbies. They don't want to lose uh, this enormous uh, capital. So, you know, in 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 a way to, to 
to keep that control in, over energy is to move away from oil and gas, which is a, a localized, difficult to find finite resource, to another localized, difficult to find finite resource, which is cobalt and nickel, instead of going to a, a widely available, real sustainable solution. So it has to be with, I mean, in my view, it has to be with a ongoing, basically capitalist system that need to control energy. And let's talk about one of those major stakeholders. In the film, you had incredible access to the metals company and their chairman and CEO, Gerard Barron. How did that come about? So it was through this um, that person, actually, who introduced me to the, to, the, to the subject matter, the scientist. And he started working with, at, at that time, it was called Deep Green. And then he went to, um, to, uh, to basically Deep Green went public and, and now it's the metal company. So I met with Gerard Barron five years ago. And I found his story very, very interesting because his, his view is that it might be more sustainable to dig uh, uh, nickel and, and cobalt from the deep ocean seafloor than keeping tearing down rainforests in the Indonesia and other very fragile ecosystems. So I, I, the story is kind of interesting and compelling in a way, but I think there's a flawed argument to start with that we need those needs, those metals. But then the debate of where we're going to have you know, like mineral, in order to power our so-called green revolution, it's a very, very important one. And I think we've been uh, greenwashed, brainwashed by, you know, some some very powerful lobbies, actually, that's behind Tesla and other EVs, making us believe that um, that's a way to go. And again, I'm all for electrification. I'm all for moving away from fossil fuels. So it's not not at all um, a question of, of, of get, you know, Stick, sticking to staticos or, 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 or obviously, you know, burning more fuel. Um, it's just a question of how we can really build sustainability in in, in, in that transition. So, um, but when I met Gerald Barron the first time, I, I thought it was a very compelling character for, for a film, basically, you know, like, oh, what's, and he gave me access. So what I said to Barron during that, when I first met him is like, you have two choices here. You know, I'm going to make this film no, no matter what. You don't, you know, like, this is not the question. I'm doing this film. Um, but I can give you a voice and if you give me access and I can respect, the, you know, I, I I will give you that voice in the film and I, I will not destroy you in the film <laughs> because it's not the, the aim. I want to make a balanced perspective. I want to show different arguments. Um, but if you don't give me access, then I have no choice as so many filmmakers to do an anti-extraction film uh, that just show the industry are the the evil, basically the bad guys. Um, and I think that's what is quite interesting with Deep Rising is to, to show this very uh, unusual access to the industry. It is really remarkable. I mean, you go right inside some of these key meetings with their team all around the world. How far along is the metals company in the exploration and development? Um they are they are quite I mean they they are they are backed by some of the very, very big uh, player, big miners. Um and and so I mean there's, there's some capital. Um as you know, as all the industry right now, you know, the stock market went down, the cap the, the capital um uh, yeah, the, 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 basically, you know, in the ticket and, and Wall Street is being quite low for some time. Um the truth is, I, I, you know, I don't really know how far they will go if there's no new flow of capital getting in because it's extremely expensive. But at the end of the day, it's a supply supply chain crisis. You know, if we continue to put pressure on nickel, you know, there's no doubt in my mind that deep sea mining will happen because, you know, at one point it becomes so so valuable that you know the industry will put whatever is necessary to get the nickel out and. You know, just as as it's showing in the film with this other other scientist, is nickel is zero point zero zero point five um, percent of the Earth crust, the composition, and uh, iron is five percent. So you know, it's 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 actually very very rare uh, form of minerals. So it's it's just like the demand. I mean, it's 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 the market. We're living in the marketplace. So you know, if the demand goes so high and we have a supply chain crisis, then you know the capital will flow there. Yeah, there's one point where Gerard Barron mentions that one of their plots has as many as 900 million tons of these nodules. And at the current price point, that's hundreds of billions of dollars of these materials. So you can understand their economic interest in this exploration. The other group that you had incredible access to is the International Seabed Authority. And I think it's fair to guess that most folks have never heard of the ISA. What is the role of the ISA in all of this? 
So, the so ICC is a bit of an interesting uh, beast. Um, it's, an, it's a UN instrument, so it's not for, say, uh, a, a UN organization like would be UNESCO or some of the UN bodies. And for that purpose, the IEC has a secretary general, as the UN has, and not a director. So basically, they have a lot of power. The secretary general at the IEC, uh, Mr. Michael Lodge, have a lot of power on, on decision making in a way, or at least, you know, influencing the decision that's happening right now. Um, and they have a very weird mandates to at, at the same time protecting the deep ocean flow and extracting the deep ocean flow. So it's from the way I see that I see it's a bit like a, a schizophrenic basically uh, body which is like it's 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 been built for two mandates that are contradictory. Um, how can you protect and extract at the same time, exploit at the same time? Doesn't really make any sense. So it really depends of you know the, the the power behind the Secretary General and the power behind will be one or the other one of the other agenda has been will be pushed. What's happening now with the Secretary General is extremely pro mining. Is you know has been very clear um, that is you know factors trying to to basically have a mining code ratified uh, as soon as possible in order for the for the countries to stop uh, uh, deep sea bed mining. So it's it's a it's quite a it's a quite an incredible story when you think about having a UN organization. Uh, or UN affiliated organization that is based in Kingston, Jamaica, that I have, you know, under his, under his bed, basically under his heart, like the, the, the mandate to, 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 to manage 65% uh, of the planet's surface. And, and mostly no one knows about it. And in a law of the sea that, you know, that actually is, is a text that put, that give all the, um, the legal text that made the IEC possible. Uh, it's also very clear that all the, the, the um, all the sea floor beyond national jurisdiction is common heritage of all humankind. So that's another very interesting thing. Where every single citizen of this planet have a say. We are all stakeholders of the deep ocean. So it's a, it's a kind of interesting uh, uh, process. The ISA is small. It has about fifty employees and exclusive jurisdiction over all of the international seabed, or roughly half the world's surface. In your filmmaking, did you get a sense that the ISA was well equipped to manage this responsibility? Um, I would say no, especially because they're not a UN organization for say. I would say that you know it should be overlooked by the the General Assembly of the UN, basically. You know, so the fact they can, they, they have too much independence, it give too few people too much power. Um, and I, you know, I don't. There's there's been there's been a lot of, of, of conversation about, you know, is the IEC fit for, for purpose? Um, is there collusion or even corruption? There is no case of corruption that have been, you know, uh, found yet. This collusion, collusion that's quite quite obvious. Um, but at, at the same time, is you know, is a lot of stakes here. We're talking here again about a, a body that is drafting a, a, a legislation, a, a law, a mining code. That will allow industry to go to the most remote, fragile, unknown ecosystem in the planet. And the, the the fact is, we don't we don't know. We don't have enough science. We don't know yet what will be the repercussion of starting mining the sea the sea floor. Uh, and we already. But what we know is like the planet right now is in a very big climate um, emergency. Like I mean, we we have no time to we have no time to to play with a new ecosystem. Uh, that no one knows really about yet and, and see what's happening. You know, it's like the beginning, when we start um, digging oil, no one will knew the uh, consequences on the planet, you know, and, and that's a bit of the same for me right now. It's like, can we afford to take that risk? And um, I think no, really not. A few final questions, and one is kind of related to that. The metals company and others in the sector would say that climate change is the biggest threat facing the ocean and the planet. And these metals are necessary if we hope to electrify transportation and move to net zero. But on the flip side, there's a moment in the film where the narrator Jason Momoa says, critical metals are not the solution, they're the new oil. And so I wanted to understand, and you sort of alluded to this in your last answer, where did you land in the debate? Yeah, I mean, absolutely agree with the fact that we need to move away from fossil fuel and electrification is the key. Again, I don't think electrification based on nickel and cobalt is a key. 
that's you know that I think it's a strategy again to please shareholders and 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 in the, the marketplace. It's it sounds maybe a bit naive, but it's just it's just capitalism that is you know just the way capitalists work. So you you don't you don't want to 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 move away from that model of extraction. Basically, of course, it's better to ex- maybe to extract nickel and, and cobalt that maybe oil in terms of the direct CO2. But the point, you know, like we, we're using metrics. We're using, the, for instance, the amount of CO2 that is emitted in the atmosphere, but comparing straightforward battery to oil. Fine. I mean, that's, I can see the graph. I can understand the argument. But what about ecosystem? You know, what about the, the, the value of ecosystem? Well, so, so, you know, like it's, it's, it has to be a holistic perspective. We have to see, we have to, to start thinking about the planet as a whole. As a, as a living being, uh, where everything is connected, and and when you destroy an ecosystem, you have other consequences. It's just not about emissions. It's not about how much CO two in the atmosphere. And it, we actually we need to restore right now. We need to rebuild the ecosystem in order to sink CO two. So it's it's a complex, you know, to, to tackle the challenge ahead of us. Is a lot of it's very complex, and there's no there's no uh, silver bullet. There's no one solution. And I agree that you know we need to find. To, to, to find this transition and maybe you know for a little while we still need nickel but money has to be spent massively right now in sustainable in sustainable solution and not in finding way to extract more nickel because that doesn't make any sense to me last question Matthew I know you started working on deep rising shortly after your last film in 2018 so I was just wondering if there are any additional projects or subjects on the horizon for you yeah, I'm working on. I'm, I, I actually still um, keep working on the deep ocean, but the next the next project might not be a documentary, but more like a um, location based experience and uh, like basically an exhibition and uh, using also like immersive immersive content. Um, and we're doing an IMAX adaptation of of deep rising, so it's it's more like giant screen. It's like we what we want to do now is going to science center, museum, aquarium, and and having content that is available on those spaces uh, rather than uh, the future documentary form. So I'm gonna walk in the I'm keep I keep walking in the ocean for sure. Very cool. I'm excited to see all of that. And again, congratulations on the great film. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Matthew, for taking the time to discuss your new film, which offers an excellent exploration of the history and current threats of deep sea mining. I'll leave links to where you can find Matthew and his new film, Deep Rising, in the show notes, which you can find at only.one forward slash upwell. Once again, that's only.one forward slash upwell. This week's episode was engineered by Jake Bowles. Research was supported by Serena Cooper, and our cover art was designed by Joanna Marcus at Only One. Make sure you subscribe to the show wherever you listen to podcasts and start your journey to help save the ocean and fix the climate today at only.one. For as little as $9, you can start planting coral and mangroves and removing plastics and carbon. Again, that's www.only.one. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll be back next week with an all-new episode of Upwell.